Financial Access 101, Adverse Selection in Microinsurance. The most common definition of global poverty is living on $2 a day or less. References to incomes of $2 a day can be misleading because $2 a day is an average. For the world's poor, income is usually volatile and unpredictable. A person could earn $2 today, $6 tomorrow, and nothing for the next two days. When you have a small and unstable income, you are more vulnerable to risk. Emergencies, like an illness, injury, or a bad storm, can quickly become major financial crises. In theory, poor households' vulnerability should make them great candidates for insurance. Insurance can mitigate disruptions to income and minimize the financial shocks of a negative event. But we don't see many formal insurance products offered to poor households. There's a market failure here. One of the causes is what economists call adverse selection. Adverse selection is caused by asymmetric information, that is, when buyers and sellers in a market have different information. Consumers know a lot more about the risks they face, and usually know more about the likelihood of a particular shock happening. It's difficult for insurers to assess risk for poor families who don't have financial, medical, business, or farming records. Because insurers can't differentiate between high and low risk customers, they have to price insurance as if everyone was high risk. But at high relative prices, low risk customers will leave the market because the price is more than they are willing to pay for insurance they probably won't need. With fewer potential low risk customers, the average risk of customers rises. So insurers raise prices again, forcing out more customers, and so on in a vicious cycle. This means that while insurers might initially make more money by raising rates, eventually they will begin to make less money as rates increase because the average risk of their customers is higher. If their profits peak at a level that is not profitable, they will not serve a market. Insurers often address adverse selection by capping coverage or excluding people by certain criteria. But those strategies reduce the value of the insurance policy, just like raising prices. That can affect take-up and ultimately make the market too small to cover the insurer's costs. Another way around adverse selection is index insurance, a type of insurance where everyone is insured based on an easily measured event that is outside their control. One example of index insurance is rainfall insurance. For instance, if the rainfall in a particular year is lower than average, everyone with insurance gets the same payout. Because there is a long record of rainfall measurements, insurers face a known risk and don't need to know the riskiness of a particular customer. Just as important, the event, rainfall, can be easily and transparently measured with a rain gauge, for instance, but can't be affected by the actions of the insured. But index insurance only works in situations where a transparent, reliable, and well-documented index is available. More research is needed to find effective combinations of tools to overcome adverse selection and to provide insurance products that are valuable to consumers, but profitable enough for insurers to offer them.